Someone recently sent me this. The Moqui, Moquai, Mogwai, Quibi. I looked it up while editing the video. It turns out it's Mochi. Okay, anyway. Portable Android gaming unit. Oh, look at it. It's pretty cool looking. It's kind of like a PSP with a bigger screen. Apparently this thing is really cool, but it has, well, they say it has one flaw, which is the D-pad apparently isn't very good. This thing is flat as a pancake, as they'd say in England. Looks like there's shoulder buttons. There's no secondary shoulder buttons. I can feel what they must not like about the D-pad. I don't know if you can hear that. Clunk, 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 clunk. It's doing like a double hit. Well, there's a clock in the background making noise too, but if I go left, it's barely move up and it triggers up. That must be what they don't like. Oh no, I hope I don't accidentally like access this guy's personal data. Uh, yeah, I fixed your device and uh, by the way, I stole your identity. <laughs> That'll be $300 for the repair. I already took it out of your bank account. Yeah, I can feel it every time I, I turn left. Well, actually, that doesn't seem like it'd be that much of a problem in this game. I should find a game where that would actually be more of a problem, like a, like a spaceship shooter. Now I'm still trapped in Retro Arch, but I did find this key test menu. Well, it's like googly eyes. <gasps> oh no! Oh, someone's coming! <laughs> what was that game? The Haunted House game on the Atari? Oh no! <laughs> yeah, look at that. Like, if I just barely move my thumb up, down isn't as bad. It looks like it biases a little to up. Well, I guess the same thing happens if I'm down and I go a little bit to the right. Okay, so it does have a pivot point, because I can't go left and right at the same time. But yeah, look how easy that is to do diagonals. So basically you're getting a bunch of false diagonals. Here's my impression of every transition shot in Stranger Things. Oh, dump a bunch of stuff onto the table! Because you know, when I seriously want to get some work done, I just randomly dump my tools onto a table. That is the best way to stay organized. You know, there's probably a guide on how to do this. Oh, it's just going to tell me to do exactly what I'm doing. I wonder how much this thing is worth if I destroy it. That wasn't too difficult. Ooh, two SIM card slots. 6,000 milliamp hours. What's that ad on YouTube? It's for like the Go Mobile phone charger. And the guy's like, it has 20,000 milliamps. <sighs> It is 20,000 milliamp hours. It's one of those ads where the person reading the text clearly has no idea what the words he's saying means. There's another really dumb one. It's for uh, Honey. And they've got this, um, this idiot and he's like, Honey works on all your favorite browsers. Chrome, Firefox, and, and Oprah. <laughs> they didn't realize Oprah had her own browser. I mean, it doesn't surprise me. I mean, you know, she is pretty, pretty uh, successful. Oh man, this just gave me a flashback of my of my tub. So this morning I'm like, oh my tub is why isn't it draining? Right? And I was thinking, oh no, maybe uh you know, maybe maybe it's clogged or maybe something's broken. And I was like trying to rip out the uh the screw that was holding in the little uh you know little mesh drain thing. And uh the screw wouldn't come. Actually I need to go up there and hit it with some WD-40. <laughs> but anyway, I was having a really hard time removing the screw. And then down in the basement, because this is just a one-story home, down in the basement I was looking up at the at the drain, and I'm like, okay, well, if I had to take it apart, you know, everything's pretty much here. <laughs> but then I went back upstairs, and I'm like, wait a minute, what's this connect to? And there's like this lever, and I'm like, oh, that lever also stops the drain, and that's why the water wasn't draining. And I'm like, wow, I'm supposedly smart, and I couldn't figure this out. All right, so those are the same size. You want to be careful. I mean, there's a pretty good chance there's going to be different length screws. So what I'll do is I'll just mark the plastic with my silver Sharpie. Oh, there's something else we have to watch out for. See, that? that's actually uh, metallicized. Is that the right word? Uh, plastic that actually acts as an antenna. 
probably for Wi-Fi. Well, I removed all the screws. Two of them were three millimeter, the rest were four. It's kind of confusing. It looks like this is all one solid piece. There's some metal here, so I'm assuming that's where the main uh, Qualcomm process is going to be. So it looks like this should separate around the edges here. You know, I bet the new Matrix movie is going to suck. I mean, they went from like Lucas 1977 to Lucas 1999, but only in like, what, three years, four years between the first and second Matrix movie. So I do not have any hopes for that. Bill and Ted 3, now that could be cool if it ever comes out. Our movie's over. <laughs> I do want to see uh, Top Gun Maverick in theaters. I don't, I mean, I didn't really like Top Gun that much when I was a kid. I mean, basically it's just an Air Force recruitment video, but the fact that they shot so much of the new one for reals, I want to see that, you know, on a big screen. What is holding this in place? Oh, wait. Uh, is this, I don't want to break it, but it could happen. Why did they hide this screw under a sticker? <sighs> it's like the true test of the adventurer. Only the patented man shall pass. Yep, there's a piece of a thermal pad. Stuff always feels really weird. Oh yeah, so they've got ground connecting pad there. Oh, they have, uh... you know, I've actually used these same kind of speakers before. So these speakers have little um, tabs on them that bend so they fit via compression. There's actually a lot of compression fittings on this. Like we talked about these antennas here. So you can see there's compression fittings right there or compression contacts, right? Now we're getting close. Oh, of course the D-pad's gonna be under the critical portion. Um, it looks like, okay, so these are two separate pieces of circuit board, right? And this is how a lot of phones are. I mean, the inside of your phone is mostly battery and usually the circuits will be at the top and then go along one side of the battery. Have you got your screen connector there? You got these over shoulder buttons. Who cares about that? Oh, there's your, uh, see there's your LED for the flash. All right, um, so what we need to do is we need to get underneath this uh, circuit board. So let's think about that. So there's a connector for the camera. So that should come off just like this. There we go. Happy little clouds. So these are called ZIF sockets, zero insertion force. Although, I mean, that's a misnomer. I mean, it's not zero insertion force. It's very low insertion force. You know, it's like zero gravity. The space station isn't in zero gravity. It's in microgravity. What's holding the SIM card? It looks like the SIM card connector is just being held in place by, by faith. Well, faith no more. You're coming off. Uh, oh no, is that glued in place? No, eh, it might be. Well, actually, maybe we don't need to remove that. Well, no, but it looks like there's probably a connector for the screen underneath it. Because if you look, there's three things. This one, which I'm guessing is going to the SIM card, and these two, which are also mirrored over here. So I'm guessing those are important. <laughs> Although it's weird that they, you wouldn't think, I mean, it looks like this doesn't, this side of the board doesn't really do anything if I had to guess. It probably just has the battery charger and, you know. See that right there? I believe that's the connector for the SIM card. If that's true, then I should be able to, um, Torque that and lift the SIM card up. Yeah, something's still stuck. I would—I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if these SIM cards were like double-sided glued to this aluminum, or well, double-sided taped. Let's see if I can feel anything with my knife. Yeah, there's something right there. Oh yeah, there's definitely glue or adhesive under there. I can feel it being cut by my knife tonight. Yeah, so my opinion of the build quality has decreased upon coming across the school because the thing is, I don't want to just willy-nilly go in there with my knife because there are small ribbon cables in there. So I, well, I could do this. Okay, so if you look at like this can, this can is probably going to go that full length. So I could take my knife like that and what 
is with my marking tools today? Right? So that's like the max depth with the knife. So as long as I don't go past that, it shouldn't kill anything. Uh, now going between the cans, there's maybe two separate cans. This one's probably a memory or something. <laughs> Gotta make sure my fingers are clear. Come on. So, see, don't want to, don't want to be in the path of that. Oh. Yeah, not, this, this part's kind of bothering me from a design's perspective, because you're having to exert a lot of physical force to remove something. And it's near some, uh, yeah, okay, so, oh, it's adhesive conductive tape, so. Okay, it looks like there's only two screws here. Unless they do something as insidious as put a screw underneath that can. Something still feels attached to the top. Oh, no, that's good. All right, so before we do this, we're gonna wanna take these connectors, which I assume are probably for the screen. Why am I whispering? I'm alone in the wilderness. No one can hear my thoughts. All right. Come on. Happy little clouds. Oh, I missed one. Look at that. Oh, you are a turkey dinner, son. Wonder why it's got conductive tape over. Resistance is futile. Oh, interesting. There's a. Uh, they got chips on both sides. Well, I guess that makes sense. This thing is supposed to be pretty powerful. Oh, I got some sort of heat pipe thing going on there. Interesting. Oh, this must be the analog stick. Okay. Well, the reason we are gathered here today is because of the D-pad. All right, so how are they doing this? All right, so they're using tactile domes. So if you have um, like a, a tack switch, like, you know, it's, now this is a smaller one, but any bog standard tack switch inside of it is uh, basically a slightly concave metallic dome. It's usually brass or steel. And um, when you push the button, you basically compress the dome onto a pad. Actually, I think I, let me just see. Look, I'm just gonna dig through my garbage here like a possum. Oh yeah, here we go. This is from an Xbox One controller. So, <laughs> you know, the one with the improved D-pad? All it is is a sticker. And they're these slightly concave domes, right? And um, when you push the button, can you hear that? That's all it is, right? However, it's a plastic actuator, and what I can already see with this is it looks like it has a silicon actuator on it. See how the, they've got these little silicon pads here? Oh, this is really weird. What the? Um, okay. This is weird. What? That's bonded to it? Well, first of all, the throw of this D-pad is really lame. It doesn't move that much. What? How is this assembled? We'll take a look at this. Um, right here, the same thing that the silicon was um, stretched over. It looks like a slightly burnt tab. 
Yeah, so it looks like this was melted in place. The mummies came and their faces were melted. This is all some sort of a flim flam. Look, lady, I went out into that desert and all I found was death and blood. Every time I hang out with my sister, we watch that movie. Still the last best Indiana Jones movie made since Last Crusade. It's uh, the only Indiana Jones movie made since Last Crusade. I mean, yes, you know, there are only three Indiana Jones movies. <laughs> there are three lights. Too bad the Javitos don't know you the way I do, Belloc. Yes, too bad. You could warn them if only you spoke Javitos. Ta-da! have to say, for what I assume is a premium device, that's a pretty janky way of installing a D-pad. I mean, not only does the D-pad suck, but it's hard to remove. So here's a, here's one from an Xbox uh, One S controller, 2016 model. And we talked about, you know, those pads or those, uh, you know, contacts. And this is what contacts it. It's hard ABS plastic, right? So you can get a very positive uh, a feel. And look, they even put a little bit of lithium grease in the center pivot point. Xbox One S controller is really nice. It's just like the best controller ever. I guess we'll have to see what the next gen brings. The Aperture Science PlayStation 4. Got that one song in my head. Your love is like a knife. You make the knife feel good. Well, I can tell you one thing about this right off the bat that isn't good is there's a long distance between the surface and the actual pads. And that's actually something else that um, they fixed, like with the Xbox One versus the 360. One of the reasons the 360 D-pad was so lame was that the distance between the actual finger contacts and the uh, PCB was like, pff, I don't know, 0.8 inches. I mean, it was a lot further than this. So that's why that D-pad on the Xbox One or um, Xbox 360 sucked because you were basically moving around like, like a big stalk instead of actually having your fingers right on the button. So that's not ideal. Yeah, you've got like this these isolation slots of, of silicon. So uh, it's, it's almost like the switches are too well separated and that also makes them too easy to hair trigger. Let's grab a measurement with the good old dial calipers. 0.272. All right, so that's a difference. That's the distance between the face of the unit and the, the pads. And we could probably have a uh, center pivot stalk point right against that circuit board. It probably won't affect anything negatively. I mean, this is a pretty simple circle and looks like there's also a notch right there. So we could probably use that as well. So what we could probably do is 3D print something that fits within this space and then we can key it using that notch and then we won't actually even glue it in place. It'll just be held in place by the fact there's a circuit board behind it. Oh no, what's this? Oh, that's the... Uh... Oh, that's for the... that's for this. Oh, that's probably like the ambient light sensor. Yeah, uh, I think that seems pretty straightforward. So I guess now this becomes a design project instead of a teardown, but then it'll become a reassembly project. Fun. Let's get some initial measurements. So let's get the opening here. Now I'm going to rotate my calipers a little bit to make sure I've actually got the, the right size, although of course I have a tolerance value for it. That's going to be 0.859. So I will put that exact size into the computer, although I will add uh, tolerance on top of it. I must be tolerant. 0.859. John Spartan, you are fined two credits for violation of the verbal morality code. Well, it turns out that <laughs> Demolition Man, Demolition Man, folks, was the most accurate future movie we ever had. It was not Back to the Future 2. Shark still looks fake. All right, I'm going to go in. Eh, 0.015, I think, should be pretty safe. Okay, now we've got this little tab here. 
Now clearly the tab is centered on the, what would that be, the left hand side? <clears throat> so, uh, what we, oh, before we do that, there's this inner lip. So we measured the outer lip, the visible lip, but now we're going to measure the in, inner lip, right? Uh, because we'll use that to make this actually stay put, and also uh, we need to know what the inner lip is to know what the uh, tab is. 0.952. All right, I'll draw that on the screen. Yeah, I'll just go 945. Oh, wait, no, I have to make it exactly right because I have to measure that tab. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to, I don't know, if, can you see this? Hopefully. Uh, that tab, oh, I mean, it's not much. It's just a little, wee little tab there. Oh, call it like, I'm going to go 030. And for the height, 1.15. I'm going to find, well, I have to think about this as flipped. Okay, so... Uh, yeah, so what I say, it was 030 in for the tab, and then, uh, well, since it was 15, let's go 0. 0.5 up and down, and that should give us, that should give us a good tab. Just, just give me a tab. Can't give you a tab unless you order something. Give me a Pepsi free. If you want a Pepsi pal, you're going to pay for it. Yes, Back to the Future, where the only major difference between kids in the 50s and the 60s was what we called our soda pop. So this would be the actual thing facing the user. This would be the ring inside the unit, and this would be the tab to orient the ring. So before I do anything else, I'm actually going to 3D print a test of this to make sure my initial measurements are correct. I'm going to print the test cap using my newly refurbished Flash Forge Creator Pro, which I call the Flash Forgery. I basically removed everything electronic and just kept the uh, frame and the gantry. So as you can see, I've got a BL Touch uh, bed leveling sensor on there right now. An E3D V6 hot end, a custom part cooling fan and blower. Then up here, I have my super tension arm to keep the filament tight against the uh, idler wheel, then I have this lid so I can check the temperature of the heat sinks around the driver stepper motor because it was getting kind of warm and there's actually a fan back here that exhales heat from that stepper motor. Then as you can see, I've got, also I've got tons of NeoPixel. I think there's like 88 NeoPixels inside of this thing to light it up like the surface of the sun. And I added a new uh, keypad. This is also from Big Tree Tech, just like the SKR 1.3 board. So it has the um, LCD simulator mode, and you can also change modes and go into serial touchscreen. And the reason I wanted this mode was because it makes it really easy to change film. Like you can go to extrude and select the nozzle and then push this button to actually, you know, extrude filament for loading and unloading. So I really like uh, front facing user controls for unloading and loading filament. Uh, oh yeah, and then, uh, <laughs> I used my CNC machine to mill the powder coating off of the aluminum heat plate and then I bought 3 millimeter borosilicate printing glass from uh, Amazon I believe and then I uh, made my own custom clamps, I 3D printed them and they actually fit around the mounting screws there and there's four of those of course. And then this one, I don't know if you can see it, but this one actually has some rubber on top. Well we'll see it after it starts. And that rubber is used to wipe the nozzle. Oh, here it goes. So yeah, it's gonna purge the nozzle, bring it over that, and then begin. So then you can just pull it off of the rubber. Um, yeah, you can run this thing at 9,000, 14,000 millimeters a minute. Although I think the extruder being a direct drive can't quite keep up with it. But listen, like the motors are basically silent. All you hear are the fans, and that's the um, the TMC2208 stepper drivers that I'm using with this. So yeah, um, it's well, I mean, I think the uh, the e th the authentic E3D hot end was the most expensive part, but the electronics was like pff, I don't know, 50 bucks for the new board and this. Uh, well, obviously, I made my own custom uh, enclosure for that. Also, I moved the control knob. It was like right there. I remounted it over there because I thought it was too close to the screen. 
Uh, so that was one thing I customized. And this is the same size as the original control panel for the Flash Forge. I was going to put the front plate back on, but I like the fact that it's all open, so I can actually reach through the unit and turn it on and off. Uh, yeah, so um, this won't take long at all. I also customized the G-code for the starting and ending script, so it starts heating the extruder and the bed at the same time, darn it! I don't know why more printers don't do that. I'm sure there's some reason to not do that, but it's stupid. I mean, why not heat it up as fast as possible? On small prints like this, you can often spend more time waiting for the extruder or the bed to heat up than the print actually takes. Let's see how we did. Oh, you must understand, the nerves were completely severed. We probably could remove a little bit of the outer towel and see how it can move like that. See how the outside of the controller slopes down a little bit and there's a bit of a lip, but um, that's not really that big of a deal. We could just put a fillet on that and you'd barely notice. Half millimeter there, maybe about 20 mils. <laughs> there, I used both measurements. <laughs> Hashtag American. All right, so and then there's like, let's see, what's PlayStation Vita? Looks like there's like, uh... oh, okay. So where these intersect, they come in in a triangle shape. All right, I think I can do that. I can do that. Wait, does it? Does the intersection start at the? Tri okay, yeah, it starts at the triangle. Blah 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 blah. Thinking the best way to do this. La 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 the cross there, or the, not the cross, the Triforce. Let's go here, create another sketch. It's like, oh man, how many sketches is he gonna create? As many as it takes. Sure, I'm just pulling these numbers out of my butt. Do you think I have a plan? I don't. I do not have a plan whatsoever. I'm just making this up as I go along. Dun, 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 dun. Oh boy, more Indiana Jones references. Old, 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 old. <laughs> yes, the Indiana Jones is old song. So one thing about a D-pad is, you know, obviously it, it tilts and rocks in all directions. So uh, you actually have to take that into account when you uh, design the tolerance around it because... When, what, like when you push down uh, the top side of it, the up direction is going to have uh, an equal uh, movement in the other direction. So you have to actually take that into account. So if we look at our original body here, right? I mean, actually, we could just extrude into this. I mean, that's, I'm going to make a copy of it. I'm going to call it uh, D-pad top. D-pad top frame, all right? Turn off the backup. All right, so what we can do here, um, I mean, this isn't, you know, entirely the whole, well, oh yeah, so we take this, and what we can do is we can take that shape and actually extrude it out. All right, so that gives us one hole. Now, if we turn this on, now obviously there needs to be more below that, but just for starters, you can see that we have our uh, spacing tolerance around it, our, our Kevin Spacey tolerance. I guess people have no tolerance for Kevin Spacey now. Circular pattern. Okay, so we've selected those shapes. We're going to select this for the axes, and then we're going to say four. That should give us our four cutouts. You can be awfully close together, but that's fine. So I'm going to make another sketch, and I'm going to, um, yeah, basically... Oh, wait, uh, let me do one more thing. Okay, those are our contact points. So we can't go any further out than that. I think we could do that, though. All right, so let, yeah, let's do 7-2. Okay, so we're going to make that a 7-2. That's going to be a disc on the bottom. And then we're going to give it a pivot point of about point. Uh, eh, let's go, eh, let's do point one. All right, uh, we might as well go, uh, I don't know, just whatever. Well, we got to leave some mass at the top. Uh, point one, that seems... So we went up 0.1, so let's go negative 0.09. Uh, 
Okay. So now if we look at it like this, you can see it's just underneath, you know, the front of it. And then these are going to look like that, right? So I'm going to make a copy of that just for posterity. And it's posterior. Let's get rid of that. So really easy way to copy this. We can just take this and we can extrude it down until it intersects. Remember earlier we made that circle pattern, so we're gonna do the same thing again. So we're gonna select all of these faces. I'm gonna go back over here, circular pattern. The axes, uh, I don't know, a circle, and then four, and it should glue them in place. Boom! Yeah, see that? Yeah, that looks pretty cool. All right, I'm looking at the bottom of the unit. Um, let's turn that off. So these are the points where we have to actually actuate the uh, tack switches. So these will be like little pegs. Hopefully better than the ones we saw before. And then this needs to attach somehow to the bottom of the D-pad. But the D-pad also needs to have a stalk in the middle of it. Oh, okay, cool. It actually selected what I wanted. <laughs> All right, so, um, so it's... Uh, 0.117 to the tax which is so let's just go point negative 05 and that's just so we have you know enough mass for it to you know stay together so now we're going to take each one of these which actually will contact contact the tax which and go negative 0.117 and then we'll make sure that we join okay all right so here's my plan i'm gonna make a rectangle oh, not like that well, I guess that's a square, not a rectangle. Oh, no. All right, here's my plan. I'm going to make a square like that, then give it, you know, well, it seems like the offsets have been pretty. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the pivot point, And we're going to give it that same square. Then we'll subtract the square from the D-pad as well, and then we can basically glue them all together with the square, the square peg reference point. Uh, what was that? 0.05? And the transformation to the dark side of the force will be complete. Anakin, I'm being turned into a frog! Help me! Well, I, I helped you. Now will you save Padme's life? It turns out I don't actually know how to do that. What? But I'm sure together we can unlock the mystery of the Sith. So, wait, wait. You're telling me that I just betrayed everything and you don't even know how to save What's-Her-Face? That is correct. Here's the wireframe view. So we have the D-pad. The pivot sits inside of that. And the pivot also connects to the thing that pushes the tack switches, and you can see the pivot is a little bit longer than the tack switch actuator. And you know, if it's not quite right, we can always just hit it with the Dremel. All right, um, I'm gonna print up these pieces and let's see if we can get this assembled. Okay, got all the pieces. Let's see how it goes together. That is how it's supposed to work. I'm not gonna glue it yet. I just wanna get an idea if it's gonna fit. And Rotate properly. PCB into place. Make sure we don't catch any of these cables underneath it. All right, looks like those are clear. All right, where? Okay, it was these three millimeter screws, I believe. And it was this one. Yeah, Aaron boy. Time to collect the groceries. Seems a little on the tight side. You know, we can uh, take it out and just slice it off a little bit to test the theory. But that's why we test it. Okay, I have it installed. I did a few tweaks. Actually, I should probably measure it because I manually ground it down to get a good height, but that wouldn't help anyone trying to reproduce this. Yeah, I should. It's. Ever, the middle the middle parts ever so slightly deeper than the actuators. Yeah, after I ground it down, the middle post, the pivot post, is 20 mils longer than the actuators. Not millimeters, mils. 
which means thousandths of an inch. So that would be 0 0.02. Zero. Be sure to comment about my thumbs. Because I, you know, I'm completely unaware that I unconsciously bite my thumbs. Well, I mean, I'm, un I'm unaware when I do it unconsciously, but I'm certainly aware of the result of that unconscious action. I could put a little Arctic silver in there just to be sure. Yeah, I think I should do that. I mean, yeah, it's not the same stuff, but I just want to make sure, you know, since the other thing was obviously liquid and then compressed and then cooled, I just want to make sure that I have a good constant contact with that. That's what I like about tech switches. You can hear if they're working. That's handy. We've got a nice aluminum studs for those. So yeah, well-built unit, aside from the uh, dual SIM card being taped in place. Let's put these ziffs back in. Ziff, I have made it with a lady. Inform the men. Ugh. So I'm going to like to lift the little arm up, a little black arm. Come on, there we go. And stick it in, and lock it in place. Let's get this project out onto a tray. Nice. Why wouldn't I watch Steve 1989 MRE? Although I don't know how that guy avoids getting botulism. And these, just kind of push them over, click them in place. What's that other YouTube channel? What's that guy, like Tronics Fix? The guy who's like, I bought 100 dead switches off eBay. Can I make them work? This this reminds me of him. You know, I don't see why I couldn't turn it on in this condition. I mean, this rear thing, well, I guess it does have a heat sink. <laughs> okay, maybe that is important. Yeah, I could probably just turn it on like this, as long as this heat sink is engaged. I mean, there's not that much metal back here. If you could go ahead and not explode, that would be great. Mm -hmm. This will hold the batteries in place until the pyramids are dust. To survive war, you must become war. I am war. Hey, yo, I think Apollo's gonna need a stepladder. So something else the client was talking about were these shoulder buttons. They said they feel like they're a little too hard to press. It's kind of sketchy, I didn't notice it before, but uh, you have to have the SD card out, otherwise the case won't open. All right, so um, they've got pretty much the same kind of uh, tack switches here for the shoulder buttons. But these are spring-loaded themselves. See how they're moving in? So you would have the force of the spring and the contact dome. Those, would, those forces would add up. If only you knew the power of the dark side. Also, I am your father. No. Also, I hate sand. What? It's coarse, it's rough, and it gets everywhere. I thought, oh, I've got this suit now. No sand can get in. Boy, was I wrong. Sand gets in, and then it rubs against my burned flesh. I think the Emperor did that on purpose as a cruel joke. Luke! There it is. A spring. Now it has... No springs! Gotta wonder, what came first? The no springs promotional video, or... It's a Wonderful Life? Well, it's looser than it was, but it's definitely much easier to press. I don't really like how it's loose, though. Well, I guess this one's loose, too, even with the spring. Oh, maybe I just removed the springs. Maybe that would be enough. I think I'll keep these springs and just give them back to the customer and say, OK, here's your springs. It's like when the dentist lets you keep the tooth they pulled out. Oh, gee, thanks. A crappy, rotten tooth. Just what I've always wanted. Let's test it out with a real thumb smasher. Contra 3. 
The Alien Wars. Sorry, mutant alien turtle, you've humped your last floor. Well, there you have it. How to improve the D-pad on the Mochi Android gaming console. I'll put the files on Thingiverse, and hopefully this will be of use to the client, and they find it a more pleasurable gaming experience.